Welcome back to Morning Markets on Thursday the 7th of July. My name's George Bell. I'm joined today by my colleague Matt Henderson. Matt, we were in the studio yesterday talking about the resignation of some key cabinet members here in the UK. And actually, in terms of the impact, it was relatively limited on markets. We saw sterling weaken against the euro and the dollar around 1%. Bond markets were actually relatively well behaved. And in the equity markets, we actually saw some positive returns out of the UK through the day. But it's a fast moving situation. Do you want to bring us up to speed in terms of what we're seeing? Yeah, thanks, George. And as you said, situation's still very fluid. It's actually the second shot at recording morning markets today. Um, so where we got to with the updates, we had up to 40 or above 40 MPs who'd resigned from the rules within government. Um, calls for Prime Minister Johnson to resign, those he had resisted. And the point we were up to was the 1922 committee actually trying to force through a second vote of no confidence, despite more already facing one this year. Um, latest update is he's said he will resign. So come the summer, we'll have a um, Conservative Party rally before um, those elections go on and he'll remain as caretaker PM until the autumn. Thanks, Matt. So staying in place until autumn. So, you know, what does this mean? What, what Do you think this will be a big reaction for markets? Well, as you said, markets had been fairly calm and that remains to be the case this morning. Um, we think about what actually happened yesterday with equity markets. We saw a bit of a rebound from the lows that we'd seen on uh, Tuesday. Um, so European markets up about 1.9%. FTSE 100 closer to home up about one2 You mentioned dollar strength before. Uh, a measure that we use is called the Dixie. So it's a measure of US dollar strength that was up to 107. And to offer some context around that, takes you back to levels not witnessed since 2002. Within commodity markets as well, oil had come off slightly but remains at elevated levels at roughly $100 per barrel, but you know would be positive for the high inflation prints that we're seeing in developed markets. So what we're saying is, although this is a key event, and we'll be talking about this more on our podcast tomorrow, we've actually got a special around what we're seeing in Cabinet at this point in time, so please do subscribe to our YouTube channel for that. But what we're saying in essence is, although it's a big situation here at home, it's not the biggest driver of markets at this point in time. What what are the sort of big drivers which we're seeing? No, so not the big driver for markets at the moment. So if we think about two of the key data points that came out yesterday, they were over in the US. So if we start with the ISM non-manufacturing um, index, um, reading came in at 55.3. Now that's slightly lower than the reading that we saw last month, down by roughly about 0.6. But that's higher than a consensus estimate. So that was 54 and a half. So higher than expectations. If we think about some of the underlying components within that, there's some positive stories and some also negative stories. So if we start with the positives, um, prices paid part of the component was down roughly two percentage points. So as I mentioned before, like with the oil story, if we continue to see that trend, it would be positive for the high inflation prints that we're witnessing globally. But then on the... Um, more negative side, slightly weaker um, parts from uh, the employment part, but also uh, the new orders. And then the other big data point or big release, I guess, from the US yesterday was from the Federal Reserve, from the FOMC with the minutes of their last meeting. Key takeaways for us as an investment team are that inflation pressures remain high. The committee is key to make sure that inflation expectations don't become unanchored so their response to that is to raise interest rates in the meeting that comes this month so they've talked about interest rate rises of between 50 and 75 basis points and we remember in the previous meeting they hiked also by 75 basis points not all doom and gloom though in that uh, they talked about consumption still remaining uh, supported by the strong personal balance sheet data that we're seeing at the moment Thanks, Matt. So whilst a big event here in the UK in terms of international investment markets, the key drivers in focus continues to be around economic growth, around inflation and around the responses from from key central banks at this point in time. But it's a fast moving environment. We'll continue to keep our audience up to date. As I say, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date around our podcast, around our views and on morning markets. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, 
then download our free guides to ICEs and pensions. These are available in the video description below.